Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Mike. I'm with FitTrace, and I'll be joined by Dr. Jordan Moon, our Chief Science Officer. Dr. Moon is a leading researcher and educator in nutrition, exercise, and body composition. Today, we'll be talking about how to better understand DEXA body composition data with a focus on using the FitTrace basic report. That's the report built into the app. We also have an advanced report, which we'll cover in a future webinar. At the end, we'll answer any questions and try to fit in as many as possible. Uh, you can submit your questions through uh, the questions thing there in GoToWebinar. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jordan right now. Thanks, Mike. Okay, you should have control. Okay, folks, hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so this is the basic body composition uh, report from Dex using the FitTrace app. And I'm going to cover just the basics here and then kind of show you some, some comparisons. So let me know if you guys can't hear me or if you have trouble viewing this. But in this report, you can you see this is, uh, you know, this is a nickname, this athlete we're calling Lefty. And, it's ironic. You'll see in a minute, but uh, they're from Acme University, so this isn't this isn't this is essentially de-identified data. Um, you see your height, ethnicity, gender, and age up in this top, and then we have total mass, fat mass, lean mass, muscle mass, fat-free mass index, and bone mass, and then you see the percent of those values underneath. So if you add bone to lean you get 80 plus 20 that gives you 100 percent so based on your body mass how much is fat how much is lean and how much is muscle so in this example this 21 year old male is 20 has 20 percent body fat and i know a lot of people focus on that value but uh, we're going to talk about the importance of some of these other values and the significance of these values so Covering the top here, obviously body mass, this is actually what's measured from the DEXA itself. It's not what's entered into the DEXA. Now height, which is a component of fat-free mass index, which is similar to body mass index, this has to be entered in. So the more accurate the, the scan location enters this, this height, the more accurate your, your data is going to be. So fat-free mass index, think of it as body mass index. like. Body mass index is just your mass over your height squared. Fat-free mass index, think of it as BMI minus the fat. So we're only looking at the fat-free mass, which is your bone plus your lean. So in this case, it's 158.4 pounds divided by the height in meters squared. So that index here we'll get into in some of the more advanced reports, but it's an indicator kind of, uh, especially for young athletes, about how much muscle their, or how much fat-free mass their body can actually put on to their skeletal frame. So it's a pretty cool index. But right now we're gonna just kind of, uh, you know, just glance over it a little bit. So muscle, so as you see in this DEXA scan, uh, lean mass is much greater than muscle mass. And the reason for that is lean mass contains all of your organs your heart, your lungs, your liver, all of your organs, your, your stomach, intestines, and everything. Muscle mass is actually focused on just the lean mass in the arms and the legs, which account for almost 75% of our total lean mass. And this is a really good indicator of total muscle mass, focusing on the arms and the legs. So you can have lean mass theoretically stay the same and have muscle mass changing. So these are two variables where the easiest thing to think of it is lean has your has your organs in it, muscle doesn't have any organs in it. So you can really focus on changes, especially in, in youth athletes that are growing inside, you can say, hey, you know, their organs are growing, how much of how much is actually muscle? So and then uh, obviously fat is just, you know, your standard percent body fat as measured by DEXA. Now the beauty of DEXA is the breakdown in the arms and the legs into right side, left side, and trunk. 
So I'll start here on the trunk. It's it's pretty easy to understand here. In this scan, there's no this is vis visceral adipose tissue, and if your machine has that, you have those readings here. And android and gynoid is basically apple pear versus shape pear. So how much fat is in, in the upper section here versus how much fat is in the lower section here? So in, in most men, you're going to see a uh, little bit higher android compared to gynoid. But it all really depends on the athlete and their, and, you know, their, uh, their body themselves. This person is, you know, right around the normal range, I would say, and we'll get into that during the advanced reports. But this just basically tells you the distribution of fat. Is it the upper body or is it the lower body? And this becomes more important when you're dealing with overall health than athlete status. Uh, in this particular case, we're dealing with an athlete. Trunk here, and in all of these categories, this is pounds of fat, lean bone, and this is percent of fat, lean bone of that tissue. So if you add your bone, lean, and fat together, how much of it is fat? It's 19.3%. So there's a total for all this tissue here, and this is the percent. So when you add these up, it equals 100%. So you can see, obviously, in this case where you have 72, almost 73 pounds of lean and 18 pounds of fat and almost three pounds of muscle or a bone, that the highest percentage is going to be your lean. And we'll get into that a little bit more, but you'll see kind of this trend throughout the whole body of the same similar ratios. But when you start comparing sides, you start seeing some differences. So in this, in this case, let's look at just the left arm to right arm. You see 2.37 pounds versus 2.23. It's, it's pretty close. It's within the error of the machine itself. And when you see 18 versus 17.9, I'd say there's possibly an imbalance there with fat, but that's not as big of a concern as lean tissue. So lean tissue, we see the same percentage, 77.3, 77.3, but we see 10.24 pounds of lean mass versus 9.6. So I wouldn't say that's necessarily uh, an imbalance, but there is some uh, indicator that this, this lefty in this case is actually a right-handed athlete and he kind of dominates on the right side. So there's something to watch, and if that gets worse, it's something that maybe you want to address. Now, when we go to the lower body, we'll see the same thing. You'll see 25.6 pounds in the right leg of lean versus 23.9 pounds in the left leg. So, and again, fat's about the same. So what we're seeing here is right leg has a greater percentile as well as total mass of the lean component on the right side of the body. And it's really, really important mostly in the lower body because imbalances like this can lead to injuries. And uh, we just had a 16-year-old kid that we scanned and looked at his data. And you could actually see his hip imbalance on the DEXA scan because his hips were, and you'd see how, how far off his, uh, his feet were from each other. And you could see he's a, he's a kicker and soccer player, so he was really right side dominant and had some really large levels. Uh, or large variability from the right side to the left side. So just from one scan, this report can kind of give you an overall uh, understanding of balance specifically between athletes or between sides for athletes, your right leg versus left leg, left arm versus right arm. Now, if that's something that you want to watch out for, you can obviously uh, modify that through, through training programs and, and things like that in the weight room and, you know, doing more, ba more balance type lifting or focusing more a little bit on the, uh, the non-dominant side. So that's the basic report. Uh, if you have any questions on just that coverage, now I'm going to show you this report is designed to be printed. So you can print this report, sit down and talk to your athletes or, or talk to your patients or, or subjects about it. And then it really becomes interesting. Well, I'll, I'll talk more about this down here later about the trending. Um, and that's what we're going to go over now. So let's take lefty and let's look at, say, let's look at a year from September 26 to September 24th. So we're looking at a year, one year difference between body composition scans. So one thing I want to notice, and this, this could be the case, as this athlete aged, it looks like he grew almost two inches, which is possibility. But what I want you to know is, what I want you to see here is this athlete gained about five pounds 
in mass, but his fat-free mass index went down. And the reason that went down is because he's taller now. Everything else in terms of muscle went up, almost five pounds of muscle. Lean mass, 5.3 pound gain. And fat mass actually went down. So here's an example of one year where this athlete said, all right, I'm gonna gain weight, I might be growing a little bit taller, and I'm gonna try and gain muscle and maybe lose a little bit of fat over a year. And one thing I wanna show you here is pretty clear. You can see in the knee, you see the red areas. So he had some increased uh, fat in the lower body here. And in one year, you can see that that's significantly lower. And what we see here on the right leg is his fat went from 7.15 down to 6.6, .6. left leg 7.13 down, also down to 6.6. .6. And his lean in his right leg went from 75.63 to 77. So that went up. And then his lean in his left leg, 73.9, went all the way up to 26.2. So in this case, you can see where this athlete's actually improving on their balance because they're getting, they're closer now to having similar lean mass, but they're also increasing lean mass in both and they've lost a little bit of fat in both. And that could be due to you know, increase in legs, uh, increase in the size of the legs. But here's just an indicator of looking at the legs. And you look at the trunk as well, you can see the trunk, he gained a little bit of fat gained a little bit of lean, so the trunk didn't really change much. And the arms also changed a little bit from 10.24 to 11 and 9.6 to 10.2. So again, he's offsetting this balance in his lean mass. Gained a little bit in his arms, not much in his trunk, but he gained the most mass in his lower body. And you can see where, which legs uh, he actually increased that. And you can kind of see it here in this trending when you look at all the scans that he had, we're only comparing September 26th to September 24th. So this scan versus this scan. So you can see this trend in decreased fat and you can see this increase in lean mass over time. So this is a good example of what we'd expect a, a healthy athlete to be doing over a year period, if not, if not shorter than, than a year, seeing a, a gain like this without, you know, uh, too much gain in fat, unless the sport requires it. This may be in, in, an individual who just wants to increase lean mass, increase their speed without having an increase, too much increase in body mass. So now this next example, Ray, is a, a really good example. These next two examples, I want to, uh, I'll say are really good examples for focusing on how a small amount of lean mass or small amount of total mass can really uh, show different variables and changes in the actual DEXA report. So this person, this individual here was about 200 pounds in December and about six months later, they're 202.3. So that's only 2.3 pound change. But what we want to see here in this athlete, say if this is December's off season and maybe this is preseason in September, his fat actually went down a little bit here lean mass went up a little bit, 149.4 to 152. Muscle mass went up. Fat-free mass index also went up, and actually his bone content went up, went up slightly. So we're seeing this small increase in mass, and what we're seeing here is that he clearly lost some fat here, but also gained some lean in muscle. So we can see that on this on this report where his, his fat kind of drops down and stays consistent, where his lean is trending towards the upside. Now, when we look at this, this individual, you see our, his arms went from 11.6 to 11.6, 10.6 to 10.6. So the only thing that changed in his upper body is he lost a little fat in those arms, it, uh, just the left arm actually, the right arm didn't change. So he's maintaining upper body lean mass in this case. Now let's look at the trunk went from 22.5 to 22.1. So he's lost a little fat in the trunk, but he's up from 27 to 26.9 lean mass in the trunk. So his, his shoulders, back, and chest may have uh, got a little bit stronger. Arms stayed about the same. And when we look at the legs, we see fat going from 6.5 to 6, lean staying the same. And then in the 
leg that's imbalanced, we see a 6.5 to a 6.4. And then here's really you know, what's the most important in this athlete. He went from an imbalance of 26.5 in the right leg to and 25.1 in the left leg to now 26.5 and 26.1. So this individual here in only 2.3 pounds, you can see is, is following uh, protocol or procedures and, and changing his body composition through nutrition and, and training and diet uh, that's, that's advantageous to a balanced body and possibly even better for his sport or overall health. So again, 2.3 pounds, Here's an athlete where we can clearly see well, that that imbalance is being is being corrected. He lost a little bit of fat, maintained maintained his arms uh, fat and lean, and really focused on getting that imbalance and adding some uh, mass in the, in the trunk. Now I'm going to show you another athlete with with the similar time frame and the similar amount of mass change. So again, here we're we're talking about 2.2 pounds of mass change. And we get all that information here about what's going on with this athlete over a six-month period. So looking at another athlete from January 13 to September 25th, this athlete's a little bit heavier, but he goes from 258.2 pounds to 260.2 pounds. So that's a two-pound difference. But what we see in fat is he went from 55 pounds of fat in January to 64 pounds of fat in September. So he went from 21% to 25%. His lean mass went from 192.7 to 185.4. So he went from 80, 75% lean and 21% fat to now 25% fat and 71% lean. And that means he lost muscle and his fat free mass index went down and his bone, you know, went down a little, pretty much stayed the same. So here's an, here's an example, and you can see in this body image too, you can see that in the torso area here, see how much green is there, there is here? Now look at his scan later and how much more yellow there is. And in this, from this scan, yellow indicates greater fat content. So you can easily see from this picture to this picture that there's an increase in, in body fat. But when you look on the scale, you say, oh, he's only two pounds different. He's the same athlete, but in reality, there was a massive body composition change. Now this, again, this could be off season to in season, or this could be season to preseason. That's up to you and how you're coding this and what athletes you're dealing with. But this is another example of, of where only two pound difference in mass can really show a big difference in your output. And you can look and see it segmentally in this case, he went from 12.6 lean to 11.9 in the arm, 13.17 all the way down to 11.9, and then fat went from 2.9 to 3.5, 3.04 to 3.5. And we see a large gain in fat in the trunk from 24.39 to 31.7, and, and a decrease in lean mass as well. So what we're seeing here is a, is a consistent increase in fat, not as much in the legs here, 11.86 to 10.86 to 11.8, but look at the, the decrease or a very little maintenance in the lean mass from 33.48 to 33.3 and 33.75, and then his right leg went 31.4. So this also may be an indicator, if, if I don't know anything about this athlete and I'm only working with their DEXA scans, this is an example of possibly uh, a right leg injury. So this athlete may have been out for six months, and that's why he lost some muscle and, and gained some fat because he's been he he hasn't been able to use that right leg, and that would indicate here of uh, right leg possible right leg injury uh, comparing these two scans. But obviously your athletic trainer would know, and this might be an athlete where you're trying to get back to to a game shape, and this athlete maybe is a football player, and at the end of the season he had an injury and he didn't take care of it very well, and now he's coming back and he's about to start start playing, and his body comp isn't where it was the year before, and it may, may indicate that he's actually more, more likely or more at risk to, to have injury. So again, this is a good example of where you only see two pounds on the scale. The scale's not going to tell you nearly what these single reports can, especially if you compare one to the other.
So I'll leave it at that and see if there's anybody, any questions on anybody. I appreciate you for, uh, for stopping by and uh, see you next time. Uh, our goal is to do another webinar on the advanced reports where we start talking about percentiles and some other health variables and then uh, go into some other, some other more detailed uh, breakdown. So please let me know if you have any questions, what you want to see in the future. I hope this helped. Uh, I know FitTrace is, is, uh, is a great program to really get this information out, disseminate it across your players and your coaches, as well as really understand the basics without having to go through a printed report and export that data or try and, try and uh, break that down yourself with, uh, with the other folks in your program. So with that, I'll uh, give it back to Mike and see if there's any questions. Hi, Jordan. Uh, thanks, that was great. So we have a few questions here. Let's see, the first one is, what's the significance of FFMI? Uh, what are good ranges? So I'll get into that a little bit more, but I actually, I, I figured someone would ask that. So it's, there's some really good studies coming out with that fat-free mass index and specific types of athletes in terms of having specific ranges being a, a fat-free mass index too low could be an indicator of possibly uh, malnutrition or some sign of uh, a, a possible eating disorder. And then a high fat-free mass index may indicate possibly some, some, some other uh, issues in terms of uh, substance abuse and things like that. But ultimately, what it really helps for in athletes is, is understanding where your index should be as it relates to other groups of athletes, say, uh, you know, collegiately or professionally. And we're in the process of updating this, this database to have all those athletes in there. But what we show here is this is just uh, a group of men and women aged basically 20 to 80. You can see here, these are the percentiles, and we'll talk more about this in the advanced report. You'll see it's kind of pretty much stays the same in terms of over time as you age. So especially if you're in the 75th percentile, when you're 80, your fat-free mass index is about the same as it is when you're, when you're 20 in this case. So when we're looking at the higher percentiles, mean you have more muscle and less, more muscle to your size frame versus the lower percentile down in the 17s and, and you know 16s this represents you don't have a lot of lean mass to your frame so if you're say a jockey or someone who's who competes in a weight specific sport uh, or an aesthetic sport or ski jumping or things like that you you want to have a specific fat free mass index and it may you may not want to have it as much muscle as possible. You may not want to be in these 95th percentiles. You may want to be closer to this 50 or even lower. So it really depends on on your use. But in this case, it's a it's just another indicator, especially with youth athletes. If you do a, a scan on a 16 year old, and then you know every year, every six months, this will indicate how much lean mass they can put on their frame based on their height. So you'll you'll know that you know the cutoff really here is about 24, 25. So if this athlete's at 18.3, theoretically they can keep putting muscle on until they get up to that 23 to 25. And everybody's individual, but that's that's uh, in theory kind of how this fat free mass index works is, is with proper nutrition and training you can push this number up to that 24, 25 level and. Uh, and this tells us this athlete here has the frame to handle more lean mass. So that's kind of how that how that works. And I go into that. I could talk about fat free mass index and go through uh, the literature for an entire webinar. So just want to touch on that. Thanks for the question. Okay, let's see. We have another one here. Uh, in your experience, do you find injuries resulting from imbalances in body composition? So it's not necessarily the imbalance in body composition that causes the, the injury. It's the imbalance in the, in the performance of that muscle. So if you see an imbalance in somebody, in, in case like in this case where this, this person's you know, 25.6 lean to 23.9, 
this is an indicator that there may be an imbalance in the actual uh, strength of those muscles on one side versus the other side. So it's the composition uh, imbalance doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be an, in, in, an injury or there's actually an imbalance in strength, but it does give you an indicator that maybe you need to look at this athlete and see if they're overdeveloped on one side or if, they're, if their pelvis is starting to tilt in one direction. Now, now it, in most cases with overuse, you will see increase in lean mass, like in this case with the right leg, but what you also see is uh, when you when you scan this athlete visually or you have a trainer look at them, you'll see tight hip flexors or tight glutes, tight IT band, and all of that ten all of that tightness may be due to over overuse in that side. It may not be. But what, what this shows, what we see from composition is there's an imbalance going on between lean on one side of body to the other. Why? Now that's what you got to figure out. How do we fix that? That's what you have to figure out. And is this going to cause an injury? How big of a deficit is this? And is it something we can work out in the weight room? Can I get a better athlete? If you don't want a, a youth athlete 16 increasing that imbalance over the next three to four or five years, because then that's going to increase more risk for injury and, and overdevelop possibly one side of the body. Now, you take a tennis player and or uh, you know single single-handed uh, sports such as golf where you're swinging on one side most of the time you're going to have some imbalances so it's not necessarily bad but you really have to understand the type of athlete and how they're supposed to be uh, playing the sport and if it's a balanced sport maybe they don't want to have this imbalance and lean mass and strength if you want to have equal strength so you can easily do strength testing to, to determine whether or not there's an imbalance in strength. And then you can do training, bilateral, unilateral training to try and try and uh, try to balance out that athlete like we like we saw. But again, this is not diagnostic. It's not you're not diagnosing anything. This is an indicator of something might be going on. And again, with a two pound difference in an athlete, you may not really know what's going on. And then you do a scan from there, one scan to another, and all of a sudden there's this big big imbalance and they've been milking an injury for six months and they didn't want to tell anybody. And now their other, the non-injury leg is way more dominant. And now there's an increased injury, not, not only for the, the mild injury that they've been, they've been playing through, but now in the, other, in the other limb where they've been overtraining. So again, this is something to work with your trainers on. And from one or two simple reports over time, you can really learn a lot. Okay, let's yeah. see what else we have. Here's one. Is the metabolic age a good indicator for assessment change in physiological and morphology of the athletes? Well, we don't really talk about metabolic age. Um, that's a whole other webinar that we can get into. And it's, it re really depends on the variables that you're, that you're looking at. So uh, what was the end of that question, Mike? Uh, let's see. Metabolic age related to what? Uh, is metabolic age a good indicator for assessment change in physiological and morphology of athletes? So it depends on how you're calculating that, but I would say no, because in most cases you really need to look at full, full profiles of the athletes, not just the metabolic age. So depending on how you're calculating that, you know, there's there's really a benefit. The biggest benefit from looking at, at composition is independent of age. So, you know, you can sure you can compare the this 21 year old to another 21 year old, but uh, you know, in terms of what their true metabolic age is, it's a little bit. I don't know. I would say a little arbitrary to the the actual composition that we're looking at. They're less related than than someone might think. Okay, how about, uh, let's see, how does DEXA measure the muscle mass? So muscle mass is actually from an equation that was used to calculate uh, muscle mass based on just the arms and the legs. So DEX is very, very sensitive and accurate when it comes to testing and retesting of the arms and the legs because there's no organs. 
So this muscle mass is actually calculated using just your arms and your legs, and then it uses an algorithm to then calculate your whole body muscle mass. So it takes out the air in the trunk with all of the organs and everything where it's, it's not sure, where it's, it's just not capable of measuring how much muscles on top of, how much muscles in your abdominal area as well as uh, near your spine and your core as well as your organs and everything in there. So there's a lot of, uh, 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 there's an increased error in the trunk. So we take the trunk out and we look at just the arms and the legs. And when you consider training, almost all of your training increases in, in, or most of all of your training, you're going to see fat and lean changes in your arms and your legs. And they account for uh, about 75% of your total muscle mass. So this algorithm here says, all right, we'll take out the trunk, take out the organs, look at the arms and the legs, and then calculate total body muscle mass. So this is, this is really your best and most sensitive indicator of actually changes in, the, in muscle mass in an individual because the changes are going to take place first in the arms and the legs. Now, fat, you may see more in the trunk, but that's not, this is fat-free, so there's no fat in this. So this is really a great indicator especially when you're looking at small changes, uh, you know, it's as small as, you know, almost half a kilogram. This is the most sensitive measure that you're going to see on DEXA is this total body muscle mass. Lean mass is not going to be as sensitive. You might see more variability here as well as fat mass, but the muscle mass is specifically looking at the arms and the legs. So, and, and as well as this, so the, the arms and the legs data here, is going to be your most sensitive from point A to point B or, you know, time one to time two, whereas your whole body data, once you start getting all the organs and everything in there, this data it becomes less useful when there's a small change in total mass. And then these data down here are much more precise and much more reliable from scan to scan when there's not as big of a change in total mass. If you lose 15 pounds or gain 15 pounds of mass, uh, all of this data is going to, going to tell you what's going on. Now, if you only gained like two pounds or lost two pounds, like we saw on these slides with the gain, you really have to go to the arms, go to the legs to really see where that's happening. And looking at the total value, the best indicator of those small changes is going to be in this muscle, uh, muscle mass. I mean, how come uh, the muscle mass, where can I find that on the, or how come it's not present on the printouts from the DEXA? So this is an algorithm. So this this equation was used in published literature. This is calculated based off of actual MRI muscle mass scans. So this predicts based on an internal algorithm that that FitTrace uses. So DEXA doesn't calculate this data. You'd have to calculate that yourself using the algorithm. So this it's a published it's a published algorithm published you know uh, equation that you know takes the arms and the legs and adjusts it to total body. Essentially, this is actually, uh, this is your estimated MRI muscle mass. But in the case of DEXA, again, the arms and the legs are so much more uh, sensitive to change because they don't have the organs in there that it becomes an extremely valuable measurement. And there's, in for the DEXA itself, you have to think of, like, right, let's look at just the lean arm, the, le the left arm lean mass. Now, there's no organs. So, yes, there are, you know, there, there are, you know, arteries, capillaries, and, and other non-muscle related lean mass, tendons, ligaments, things like that in your arm. But almost all your lean mass in your arms and your legs is actually muscle. So some of the, some research suggests up as, as high as 96, 98% of your lean mass in your limbs is muscle. So again, lean in the DEXA report themselves is great, but when, when you add all the lean up together, not using the arms, then you add that trunk in there and that's all your organs. Muscle mass here is using your, just your arms and your legs, lean mass to calculate your total muscle mass. I hope that makes sense. Okay, it looks like that's it. We don't have any more questions. Um, uh, thanks for everyone for attending, and um, a recording of this will be available. You should all get um, emails, and looking forward to
to seeing everyone later. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone.